You won't believe it. Just with a few bolts and nuts, I'm about to make an awesome soldering iron right at home. And to make it even more challenging, I'll prepare some acid to aid the soldering process. This will make the soldering iron made from bolts and nuts extremely powerful and unique. However, I need another tool to control the amount of acid use in the solder joint. So I'm going to make a separate device for that. To control the amount of acid during soldering, I'll make a simple small bottle. All I need is a sturdy plastic bottle, a small cap with hole just big enough for dripping, and a bit of fine tuning to ensure the acid flows evenly without spilling. I'll drill a tiny hole in the bottle cap, just enough to insert a cotton swab. This swab will act as a regulating valve. After drilling the hole and inserting the cotton swab into the bottle cap, bolts and nuts often have a layer of rust or oxide on their surface. This layer prevents the metal from making direct contact, resulting in weak or non-adherent soldering. This acid will remove it and help them bond firmly during soldering. I'll secure both the cap and swab with a bit of baking soda and super glue. Baking soda reacts with the glue, creating a strong bond that prevents acid from leaking. With this method, the small bottle becomes safe and stable, allowing precise control of the acid during soldering while avoiding accidental spills or leaks. Next, I'll use a syringe to draw about three doses of the diluted acid and inject it into the prepared plastic bottle. The syringe allows me to measure the exact amount of acid needed, preventing overfilling. I'll use a mild acid, such as diluted H2SO4. This acid is strong enough to clean the metal surface and remove the oxide layer, yet safer than using concentrated acid. Once filled, the plastic bottle with the cotton swab in the cap is ready to control each drop of acid, ensuring the soldering process is safe and the joints become stronger. When using it, I just tilt the bottle downward and gently squeeze the body. The acid then flows slowly and drips through the cotton swab, allowing precise control over the amount applied to the solder joint. This method is very convenient. There is no sudden or excessive flow making it safer and ensuring the acid is used in the right place and in the right amount. Now I'll proceed to solder these bolts and nuts together. I'll use solder to join them together. Once the bolts and nuts are heated sufficiently, I apply the solder to the joint so it melts evenly and flows into the threads and gaps. However, the result was not as expected. The solder did not adhere to bolts and nuts. When applied to joint, it simply melted, flowed away, and quickly slid off. The metal surface still failed to hold the solder, indicating that the joint had not yet met the necessary conditions for the solder to bond and form a stable connection. To improve the metal surface, I tried applying a small amount of diluted acid to the soldering area. The acid quickly cleans off the oxidized layer on the bolts and nuts, creating better conditions for the solder to adhere.
Now I'll continue building the soldering tool. Prepare a small piece of wood that fits comfortably in a hand to use as a handle. After drilling a hole in the wooden handle, I attach the solder bolt assembly into this position. However, I noticed that the drilled hole was slightly larger than the bolt. To fix this, I wrapped an extra layer of tape around the bolt shank before inserting it. This increases the tightness between the bolt and the wooden handle, making the connection more secure and preventing looseness or vibration during use. After this adjustment, the bolt fits snugly into the hole and the overall assembly looked much more stable. I've got quite a few old batteries lying around, perfect for experimenting with this mini welding setup. Instead of throwing it away, I'm going to repurpose the inner core of the battery and turn it into a soldering tip, a clever way to give new life to old materials. I'll carefully extract the inner core from one of these old batteries. This core is usually made from conductive metal and its size makes it perfect for precise soldering tasks. When doing this, it's important to be cautious, avoid touching any leaky material, and always work in a well-ventilated area. Once the casing is removed, I remove the outer casing to extract the graphite rod inside, which will be used as a soldering tip. This core has a fairly suitable shape and size, making it easy to shape and attach to the previously prepared bolt assembly. When test fitted in place, the tip looks more compact and begins to clearly resemble a complete DIY soldering tool. It's a great way to recycle and repurpose parts that would otherwise go to waste. I'll grind the battery core to shape it into a fine soldering tip. This will help it heat up evenly and work more precisely. And just like that, we've turned it into a working soldering tip. To secure the graphite soldering tip, I'll repurpose a bicycle valve as a holder. A bike valve has a sturdy metal structure, a suitable size, and relatively good heat resistance. I place the graphite rod at the center of the valve, using the threaded section and valve body to keep the tip straight and stable. This approach is simple, makes use of readily available materials, and ensures the soldering tip remains firmly fixed during use. With the bolt securely in place, it's time to move on to the wiring, the heart of this DIY mini welder. I'll be using two flexible wires, one for positive and one for negative. First, I'll strip the ends of each wire. You can adjust the temperature yourself by changing the wiring or adding a resistor. It's super flexible for small welding tasks. Since this is a mini welding machine, thick electrical wires aren't necessary. I'll use this type of wire. It will work just fine. The key is to secure the connections and properly insulate the contact points to prevent electrical leakage. To finish up this part, I'll use electrical tape to tightly secure the components and insulate the exposed wires. A simple but important step. To complete the wiring, I'll attach an alligator clip to the other end. It makes a connection quick, secure, and easy to detach when needed.
I'll add another wire to connect from a negative terminal. For this wire, I'll attach alligator clips to both ends. That way, it's easy to connect and disconnect from both the power source and the device. For the power source, I'll be using a standard motorcycle battery. It's a 12E lead acid battery, powerful enough to heat up the soldering tip and stable for small electronics work. This type of battery is easy to find, rechargeable, and delivers consistent current, which makes it perfect for our DIY soldering project. Now it's time to put our DIY soldering tool to the test. I'll begin by trying to solder onto this razor blade, which is thin and metallic, making it a good challenge of tool. When soldering the razor blades, I place the soldering tip in direct contact with the metal surface and apply heat gradually. Since the blades are quite thin, it only takes a short time for the metal to heat up noticeably. When I begin soldering, the tip heats up quite quickly. After just a few seconds of contact, the razor blade surface clearly heats up and the solder starts to soften and then melt. The heat is concentrated mainly at the tip and is transferred directly to the contact point so it does not spread too widely. Next, let's try soldering a small wire. When the clean tip touches the solder on the wire, it melts instantly and flows evenly around the strands. The solder forms a neat, shiny joint that holds. Now I'll continue soldering another nut to a different bolt. The process is the same as before. I position the two parts correctly, apply heat gradually, and then feed the solder into the joint. I add a small amount of diluted acid to the surface of bolt and nut to treat the oxidized layer again. Then I apply heat and feed the solder into the joint. Thanks to the clean surface, the solder flows more evenly and adheres directly to the metal, allowing the joint to form faster and remain more stable compared to dry soldering earlier. After soldering, it's clear that the solder adheres very firmly to the bolt and nut. The joint is solid, difficult to peel off, and withstands force much better than in the first attempt. When lightly tested, the parts remain in place, giving a very stable feel. Clearly, after these improvements, the homemade soldering tool performs far more effectively than it did at the beginning. The heat is better concentrated. The solder flows smoothly and the metal bonding capability is significantly stronger. And that's it. From a simple nut and bolt, a few wires and an old battery, we successfully built a functional mini soldering tool. 
The joints came out solid. The response is fast, and it handles small tasks surprisingly well. It's a great example of how creativity and basic materials can come together to solve real problems. If you enjoyed this project, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any upcoming DIY ideas. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.